Wrestling season is here for the Eagle Valley Devils, and tonight we are showing off some of their best athletes. We meet up with the team and talk about their season right now on the scoreboard. Well, winter is here and that means work in the wrestling room and over at Eagle Valley, 18 have been crowned state champions over the years and they are looking to add at least one more this season. We talked to their coach and a few of their best athletes about the coming season and how they are preparing to reach their highest level yet. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back in. We spoke with Melvin Valdez, the coach of the Devils wrestling team, all about the coming season. A longtime local, Coach Valdez, has yet to coach a state champion for Eagle Valley, but he is hoping to produce a champion this year. Let's take a listen for how he is preparing for the season and what he's looking forward to in the next few months. We are here for the scoreboard with Coach Melvin Valdez of the Eagle Valley Wrestling Program. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Uh, well, I grew up in this valley. I'm a, a longtime local. You know, been here 47 years. I grew up in Minter and wrestled for Battle Mountain. Now I'm uh, I've been with Eagle Valley. Uh, head coach for the last four years, been coaching with Eagle Valley for the last nine years, TV program and that for 17 years, so um, been around wrestling for a, long, for a while, for a while now. <laughs> awesome, and how many people do you have involved in the program? You've got boys team and a girls team, correct? I have a, boy, I have a boys team, uh, and this, this, this year will be officially a girls team that is now separate that will wrestle girls and compete against girls um, and have their own state and regionals. So this will be the first time to have an all girls team instead of just having one or two girls wrestling boys. <laughs> well, fantastic. So are you guys gonna have split practices then with two different teams? You guys gonna all kind of practice together and be a little bit more of a co-ed team, at least in practices? Yes, in practice we will be wrestling together. Um, like I say, um, and I've said it for a while, since my daughter wrestles, I don't, I don't coach girls, I don't coach boys, I coach wrestlers. So the same way we coach boys, we'll coach, we'll coach the girls too, the same way, exactly the same way. I imagine that really benefits the athletes of both genders to have a little bit of that cross competitive nature with. Yes, because what I found out through the years is that when a, when a girl is more intimidated wrestling another girl versus wrestling a boy for some reason and the boys feel a little intimidated wrestling a girl so when that happens you know there's a lot of competition in the room. <laughs> I can imagine that that is really rewarding in both the camaraderie on the team and in helping to foster that competitive but teamwork environment despite the fact that it is a fairly individual sport. Yes um, it is it also you know it, it really brings them together because they respect each other. When there's women in the room and there's men in the room, what happens is they show more respect instead of just, you know, kind of the backyard, back alley talk. They actually respect each other a lot more and um, it's a great environment for sure. So how long have you guys been practicing so far this season? Um, today is our official three-day practice. We started on Monday. So um, yeah, we our first competition's in two weeks, but it's only been three days now. So it's basics, basic, basics. <laughs> so do you have a lot of veterans in the team returning from previous seasons? Um, I've got a really young team. I've uh, I lost, I've been dwindling on seniors and upperclassmen. My biggest class is a sophomore class. They came in last year as freshmen, but, and I've had two seniors currently right now, you know, and just a handful of, of juniors. We got a young team, most of them are sophomores. So. <laughs> I imagine that's going to set you guys up for a really competitive program in a year or two, in addition to having a little bit of that like strong leadership element from teams past. Are you finding that anybody's really rising to that natural leadership role in practices yet? Um, yes, um, we've had, we've had a, um, Cole Good, who was a freshman last year, and he is a state qualifier. 
which is really good. We in, in the past we've had our feeder program with the ball with Bald Eagle and with the middle school that gets our their kids going at a young age, four four years old, and they start at four years old and they come up so when they get here they're pretty competitive and they know what's expected of them so as it's not unusual to have our freshmen qualify for state and uh you know cole would jump into that role as well as brody's a senior and he's been with me for over four years and those guys will take the reins and get respected by their teammates well, fantastic so i know that you know wrestling kind of straddles that line between uh sport and a martial art and do you really kind of feel like you bring a lot of that martial art ethic into your practices and in your training or do you kind of feel like you foster a little bit more of that athletic environment a little bit more of that competitive atmosphere um, it, it is actually starting to uh, to flow that way as far as you know uh, MMA and that and um, you know just grappling around with with you know mis mixed martial arts actually one of my assistant coaches Barbara Hermosillo has competed at that level has went down to Brazil and competed in uh, martial arts mixed martial arts and MMA so um, this is the beginning of someone who wants to take that path. Uh, first year, first time girl I have on this team, she actually does jujitsu and she competes at jujitsu. So now she'll have grappling under her belt as far as mixed martial arts and when she goes and competes, she's going to have all that. <laughs> Do you find that that little bit of training really kind of helps her in the wrestling mat, a little bit of that cross training? It, it will. We'll find out with her. Um, she's learning right now how to wrestle and try to you know try to mix that in with the grappling as far as the uh, you know the the, mis the mixed martial arts we also got a, a junior who's um, Aoki his last name's Aoki Logan Aoki his dad actually coaches and he's a volunteer coach he actually teaches martial arts up valley you know up in Edwards so um, he brings a little bit of that grappling a little bit of leverage and just different things that kind of are the same as far as wrestling and jujitsu and everything like that I've got a bit of a competitive background in martial arts myself and it's something that I've noticed that a lot of those sports tend to share is that the body moves the same way whether it's jujitsu whether it's wrestling whether it's taekwondo and I find that like it seems to me anyway that a lot of those body Body mechanics translate really well not just from a martial arts sport but into other sports like football basketball having a little bit of that better knowledge of how the body moves seems to really help in the competitive arena are there a lot of your players who are coming to wrestling from other sports like from the football program or the soccer program or uh, basketball? Yes. yeah we've had a you know, all my fellow coaches that coach football, coach basketball, coach this, I mean, they get guys to wrestle here. Not necessarily because they don't want them on their team, it's because it gets them in shape for their favorite sport. It keeps them in shape for their, it shows them discipline, it shows them, you know, low center of gravity, which will help in their athletic stances and everything they do. So yes, um, once they leave here, um, it's hard to say, but once they leave here, the other sports are pretty easy for them as far as being in shape. <laughs> I would imagine that's the case. I always remember when I transitioned from hockey into lacrosse season, having that extra bit of wind really gave me a bit of a competitive advantage. How many of your athletes are coming straight off of a fall sport into wrestling? Um, about three or four that had played football. Um, they, so, you know, it's my sophomores that are coming in that playing football which they didn't have too many games because of cancellations and stuff like that so they're ready to hit the mat but um, I encourage them to do you know at least three sports if not two you know because that's what colleges look for um, someone who's coachable someone who does multiple sports instead of just focusing on one you know even if I got a wrestler that wants to focus on one I push him to do other sports only because they probably never do it again <laughs> you know so um, it's always we're a team here at Eagle Valley. We want them to do all the sports they can do and just be active. It's better than being at this, you know, being at home playing video games. <laughs> we have to take a quick short break, but stay tuned. We have more with Coach Valdez right after this.
Welcome back in. When we left off, we were talking to Coach Valdez of the Eagle Valley wrestling team about the coming season. Now, let's tune back in and see why he loves the sport of wrestling. Is that something that you tend to keep in the back of your mind throughout the coaching season is the college opportunities, college prospects, and how athletics can really help kids advance themselves that direction? Yes, um, so we've had, fortunately for the time I've been here, it's been fortunate that most of my, at least one or two of my wrestlers have, have went to the, to the next level. And it's not always wrestling, it could be football, you know, or it could be, you know, baseball. But they do go to that next level when we talk about it and we talk about, hey, we're, it's not about getting a scholarship for athletics. It's, it's your academics that's going to get your money. It's going to get your money there. Then you can walk onto any team and do what you love because you don't want it to be a job, but you want to keep on loving the sport for what it is. Well, and those, all of those factors play into it too. The athletics, the academics, everything is something that they look at. And I imagine that the more well-rounded your athletes are, the better prepared they are to take on the challenges that they face in college. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about the girls wrestling program? It's my understanding that you and the coach have a little bit of a relationship. Um, so the girls program, it started, um, started five, well, not officially started the girls program, but um, four years ago we had girls join when they had the wrestle boys. So it finally got sanctioned three years ago, three or four years ago it got sanctioned that it's all separate. Um, my daughter Lexi, she's come through the program with wrestling boys and went to that next level of wrestling in college. So now this year it's, it's an honor to have these girls on the team who come out and join and are for kind of relieved that it's just going to be girls that they're competing again. So it's, it's a really good year to come out, you know, and to grow the program and it's contagious. So having these girls come out just makes my, my eyes light up and seeing that my daughter had graduated and she's coming in to coach is going to be great because I, I got her back. So it's great about watching her as she gives back to the program and shows them what she's learned and the build a girls program because uh, you know it's kind of slow on the western slope building that program on the front range they've uh, got since they introduced that they've, they've gotten quite a bit of teams there well i imagine that there's or i guess what i was trying to say is that i imagine that the rules are a little bit different between the girls competitions and the boys competitions it's my understanding that the actual matches are more or less the same, but the rules surrounding the tournaments are a little bit different. Um, Any chance you can speak not, to that? Not to my knowledge, they're the same. The weights are different. The weights are different, but um, the wrestling is the same. The point system is the same. The only difference between between uh, high school girls wrestling and college is that college focuses on freestyle wrestling. So when they're in college, they're not the typical folk style. They're actually freestyle wrestling, the girls program. The, the men's program in college is, is, is regular folk style wrestling. But in girls, it's, it, is, it is freestyle when they get to college. But no, they, they're wrestling the same, the same as the boys in high school, just different weights. Could you explain a little bit about that difference between folk style wrestling and freestyle wrestling? Well, the, 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 point, the point system's different. Um, every time a back is exposed as a point, um, and most of, most of the matches I know that I'm familiar with is usually tech falls, which is 10 points ahead, versus pins. And there's a lot of throwing. The matches are fast and quick. They've got, you know, they got a, a three-minute period, and they get a resting time, which we don't get. You know, and then they go at it again. You know, but um, it's quite different, and there's a lot of throwing, you know, and a lot of rolling, a lot of different kind of leg lacing and, and gut wrenching and stuff like that compared to folk style. You know, and um, it's not in the Olympics it has it, and that's pretty much where you get it, you know. So um, it's just, it, it, when you go to men's college, it's folk style. It's just, it's, it's different for some reason for girls. I don't know why. <laughs> Do you think it relies a little bit more on flexibility and dexterity as opposed to just raw strength, and that might be why the girls' sports favorite? And, you know, my theory is they're doing it to make the matches go fast. You know, that way the matches are more you know, more exciting to watch because there's throws, there's spins and everything. And usually 
at regular folk style girls wrestling, it's almost slowing down. It's almost like baseball and softball. Baseball kind of gets boring when you watch for a while, and because not much mistakes, softball, every mistake's just a great thing to watch, you know. So I think that's how I, that's my termination of it. <laughs> it totally makes some sense to me. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back, back to practice now. Awesome. Thank you. Before the break, we were speaking to Coach Valdez of the Eagle Valley Wrestling Team. Now let's take a look at a few of their top athletes on what they are hoping to accomplish this season. Hi, I'm here with Brody, one of the seniors on the Eagle Valley Wrestling Team. Could you tell us a little about your history with wrestling? Uh, I've been wrestling since sixth grade in middle school, so this will be my seventh year. I just picked it up because I just wanted to do a bunch of things in middle school, and I just really enjoyed it and just fell in love with the sport. And it's really fun, yeah. Have you been with the varsity team the entire time you've been at high school? Yeah, I've been on varsity since my freshman year. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I, obviously, you're enjoying it so far. Yeah. And it's early in the season. Do you think that you're kind of going to take on a leadership role this season, helping a lot of the newer guys kind of learn the sport? Well, yeah, whether I like it or not, I do have to accept that I am in a leadership role and I do need to step up and help, whether that's leading in warm-ups or just helping people learn technique and stuff like that. Speaking of wrestling technique, is there anything that you are particularly interested in or any like particular style of wrestling that you really like? Uh, I like wrestling on my feet a lot. I'm pretty defensive, but uh, I like takedowns and stuff like that. Uh, stuff I need to work on too is like different ties and setups for my takedowns because I get on legs really well and then I sometimes have problems finishing. But yeah. Gotcha. So is that something that you're going to be really drilling heavily as you lead into your first competition here in a couple of weeks? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, in terms of your preparation for the season, is there anything that you do in the fall leading up to wrestling season to either get ready for wrestling or to compete in a different sport? Uh, I played football in the fall, and I lift weights year-round, so that really helps. And then uh, just like off days and stuff where I don't have anything to do, I'll just come in here and wrestle with other people. Oh, awesome. It sounds like you're quite dedicated to the sport. Yeah. <laughs> How did your football season go? Uh, it didn't go very good at all. But. I mean, we know the team didn't have an awesome record, but how about you personally? Did you really, what position did you play? Uh, I played corner and uh, receiver and running back. Do you feel like your football practice helps with your wrestling or vice versa? Do you feel like your wrestling helps more with your football? Uh, I feel like it's different. Like wrestling definitely helps with endurance and strength, but football helps with like agility, speed, and quickness. You find there's much crossover between skill sets? Yeah, they cross over very well. Because if you're really strong and can't move, then someone's just kind of get around you. So, yeah. Do you find that your wrestling background kind of helps you be a little bit more of a better defensive player in football? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm a good tackler. Just watch the hips. And it's like shooting a double leg. Uh, it totally makes sense. Well, in terms of um, when you're leaving, when you leave high school and you start moving on to college, are you looking towards continuing your wrestling career there? Uh, I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, I'll probably finish in high school, but if an uh, offer does come up, then maybe. We'll see. So, yeah. Well, awesome, Brody. I will let you get back to practice. Thank you so much right. for your time. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right, this has been the scoreboard. Back to you. All right, I'm here with Jose, one of the seniors on the Eagle Valley um, Devils wrestling team. And it's my understanding that it's your first season, right? Yes. So what got you interested in joining the wrestling team your senior year? Uh, well, I had two of my cousins in, in wrestling and I went to go uh, for the first time I watched uh, the both of them wrestle and it just kind of looked like a fun sport so I just decided next year I'll join it and so that's kind of what really got me into, into the sport. So pretty early in the season so far but how do you feel? Are you liking it? Uh, I feel pretty good. It's it's um, it's a, it's it's a pretty cool sport. It uh, it's it's pretty physical, which is kind of the kind of sport that I like. Um, but I think overall, it's a pretty, it's actually a really fun sport to play. Do you have a bigger or a, do you have a extensive athletic history moving into wrestling? Are there any other sports that you play? Um, 
throughout um, like my first two years of uh, high school, I played soccer, and uh, pretty much like my whole like life, I've been uh, training and boxing. So, but that's really the only sports that that I've played. So, both boxing and wrestling have a very similar martial arts sort of background. Do you find that any of those like body mechanic skills translate from your boxing background into learning wrestling? Um, in boxing, uh, your hips kind of do matter like a lot. Um, it's kind of the same thing in, in wrestling. You kind of want to control the guy's hips a lot. His, as long as you have control of his waist, you're pretty much going to win the match. As far as what I know, and it's the, it's the same thing in boxing. You use your hips a lot, it's where you get uh, a lot of your power. And when you're hitting, um, that's that's really um, mostly it. Besides like footwork too. Footwork's pretty pretty important. It seems like footwork ends up being really important in wrestling too. At least so far today, it seems like that's something that the coaches have gone over a lot. Have you noticed anything in that direction in terms of body positioning being a little bit similar? Um. The way you the way you kind of stand is kind of the same. I mean, your your lead foot it's it's the same thing. You want to have your lead foot in front, the other foot in back. Same thing in boxing. Um, it's kind of actually like really the same. I mean, if you're standing straight forward, both feet like um, like parallel to each other, you're you're gonna go to the ground if if you're doing that in either wrestling or boxing. Um, so they're 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 really similar. So you guys have a couple of weeks until your first tournament. Do you think there's anything that you really need to learn between now and that first competition? Yes, there's definitely a lot that I that I really need to learn. Um, kind of just need to work out on my execution for for pinning. Um, everything else, I've I've pretty much got it. But um, pinning and and standing up from from bottom position is two things that I really need to work on a lot. You at all nervous about that first competition or are you looking forward to it a little bit more excitedly? Um, I'm, I'm pretty nervous in my first competition. Hopefully it's, a, it's my first match as a win, but um, I'm mostly like all excited. I'm pretty excited for my first match. Do you know where that first match is going to be? No, I do not, but I do know that I think we're competing in one place and then the next day we're competing again in a, at a different area. Is that something that's pretty common or, or do you not know? Um, I do know most of the time it's just one competition um, over the weekend as far as what I know, so I don't think it's very common to complete uh, two days in a row. Any other winter sports that you participate in, like skiing, snowboarding? Um, not really. I mean, I, I've, I don't really do any uh, winter sports. Gotcha. Well, I'll let you get back to practice, Jose. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. That's all the time we have for you for this episode of The Scoreboard. If you have any story ideas, email us at scoreboard at tv8bail.com. We cannot wait to hear from you. And as always, visit our website, thescoreboardnation.com, to see content that you might have missed. For everyone here at The Scoreboard, I am Blake Arulian, and we will see you all next time.